I want to welcome you back again to the Learning Clinic on CKLU 96.7 FM coming to you from Laurentian University. I'm your host Bob Kerwin and this afternoon on the Learning Clinic we have Miranda Cercelli, Miranda Rocket Cercelli, who is uh, going to talk to us about uh, a number of things. Uh, in particular, we're going to talk about online learning and how online learning is becoming um, more and more popular with companies that are trying to find a better way of reaching out and training their employees. And we're also going to talk to Miranda about how she was able to use online distance education to uh, obtain her master's degree. So, uh, Miranda, welcome to CKU. Thank you for having me. Um, Miranda, a little bit of background. Um, tell us who Miranda Rocker Tricelli is. Oh my. I don't think we have enough time in this <laughs> session. We've got, we've got three hours. Go for um, it. How far back do you want me to go? <laughs> um, were you born in the suburb area? I was. I have been born and raised. I've never left the city. Um, I did all my education here. I started off, I think, uh, I think I remember, Llewellyn Park. That's where I went to secondary school. And uh, I went to pursue a uh, two degrees at Burge University. Um, I did a Bachelor of Science in Chemistry, and then I came back to do a Bachelor of Science in Biomedicine. And that's because at the time I really wanted to go to medical school and become a physician. Um, I think it wasn't until I finished my degrees and I entered the real world <laughs> that I actually discovered a passion in education. Um, and that was through teaching at one of the local institutions. And uh, I just really started to enjoy and it wasn't even just teaching it was really just the realm of education and uh, designing curriculum and, and that whole aspect so I just found a passion for that and uh, I knew I wanted to pursue higher education so I, I really had to sit down and think of what my options were um, I was wanting to start a family and, and start our lives and I didn't want to leave Sudbury because my family's from here as well um, and my husband uh, his family's from here as well so I looked at my options and I pursued a master's degree in distance education through Athabasca University, which was completely online. Um, and that allowed me to continue working, to raise family, to do all the things I needed to do while I acquired higher education. Um, and it was the most engaging and interactive experience I had ever had. Um, there was nothing fancy about it. It was literally just content and you know a lot of reading, a lot of writing. Um, but it was the way in which it was structured that made it incredibly interactive and appealing. Um, and I also chose that because <clears throat> I realized that I knew I was going to stay in Sudbury my whole life. That was a decision I made. And I just saw great opportunity with, within the realm of online and distance learning that it could offer so many people in our community. Um, and it was something that wasn't being done at the time through any of the academic institutions. Um, and if it was being done, um, from my experience of having taken courses here and there, there was no pedagogy, there was no structure. It wasn't done the way it had been done throughout my master's degree, which really made the learning experience really seamless and effortless and engaging and interactive. I actually went down to Athabasca for my graduation and I met some of my fellow students and my professors and I felt more part of a learning environment than I had in my five years of sitting in a classroom. And I think that that speaks volumes about how something can be structured in a way that really enhances that learning experience and helps you acquire that skill and uh, the knowledge you need to take that next move in, in your career and in your life. Um, so it took me about two years to do that. Um, two years to get your master's? Two years. I worked really hard. <laughs> I, um, I really wanted to get it done, and, and I also always had the idea that the more educated you were, the greater the opportunities uh, would present themselves. Um, that didn't really work out, <laughs> but um, the experience and you know, the learning experience I got from doing a master's degree, I think, is, is incredibly valuable. Um, but uh, yeah, so I graduated, and I was basically going to be unemployed, and um, three, three, I, I, three degrees later, you're unemployed. Three degrees yeah. later, I was I was pretty much unemployed, and where I was working, they just didn't see a need for what I was doing, um, 
and uh, I was expecting expecting my first child. So the pressure was on to life happens. Life happens, and so I uh, had to make a decision. Um, I had applied for jobs my, my, my whole career because I needed something permanent, as we're all seeking for that permanent, perfect, golden ticket to yeah. retirement. Um, and yeah, even after three degrees later, uh, there was nothing that was available to me. With, with your science degrees? That's right. And a master's in online ed That's right. There was absolutely, and I mean, I mean, I have a database of hundreds of jobs that I've applied for. It's kind of, you know, um, discouraging for most people, um, but I mean, it, it, it forced me into the direction and the place where I'm at now, which I couldn't ever imagine being anywhere else. So, you know, looking back, I could have never seen where it was leading to, but now that I have my own business and it's becoming successful more and more every year, I couldn't ever imagine having acquired a job somewhere or doing something you know anything but what I'm doing now so but it was it was challenging I mean you become well educated you you have you know a, a decent deal of experience enough to acquire a job somewhere yeah. <laughs> and trust me I wasn't picky for the most part um, it just um, it just wasn't happening uh, and so I decided to start my own business because there really was nothing else available um, and I learned very quickly that Opportunity doesn't just present itself, and no one's going to hand you an opportunity, uh, you know, on that golden platter. Um, and really, it's up to you to create your own opportunity, and there is absolutely no other way. There's no one that's going to open a door for you, and you really have to go with the notion that you have to do it yourself. Yeah. Um, so I, I started the challenge of starting my own business, and all the while I still applied for jobs because I needed to provide. And I've also learned that in an industry where you're providing a service versus a product, it takes much longer to build a business. Um, and you know, it goes without saying, you need to build relationships when you're offering a service. You need to build that trust um, with a product. You know, it's something substantial. People can hold it. They can try it. Yeah. They can decide right away if they like it or not. People have to see your vision. That's right. So that took a long time. I'd say a good three years of just building relationships, getting in front of the right people. Uh, getting many doors slammed <laughs> on you. Um, Gently slammed. Well, no, some of no, them were slammed, slammed pretty slammed. hard. Okay. Um, you know, a lot of tears being shed along the way, there's no doubt. Um, and even thinking back to that time, it's, it's quite emotional because it was hard. Oh, yeah. Um, Anyone who started out their own business, uh, especially if they're trying to get a, a, a concept or a vision across to somebody that can't see it, mm -hmm. it's difficult. It is. So. And, I, and I understood that there was a culture shift that had to occur with the adoption of online education. And a lot of times there, you know, most people's response was, well, we already have a department doing that or we're already doing that. But the, for me, it was communicating that, are you doing it right? Mm -hmm. And there is a wrong and right way of doing it, yeah. where, you know, just uploading documents and throwing them online is not online teaching and learning. And for me, it was about the pedagogy. Let's, let's help you structure that. So... <clears throat> Whether it's your students or your employees or whoever you're teaching, they're going to get, you know, they're going to more effectively acquire those skills and that knowledge that they need to better perform their job or to enter the real world and do what they need to do to advance and become successful. So that was hard. Um, and then my husband went on strike, so that was even harder. So the one income that was being made in the family was gone for a while. Um, and I, I just, um, like I said, I applied for jobs, every job from executive director positions to, you know, minimum wage paying jobs to even student jobs, even though I really wasn't a student anymore. Um, and there was nothing. So I, I, you know, you get to a point where you have nothing to lose and you only have one direction to go. And, you know, I, I just had to keep going. And um, it was hard. <laughs> it's kind of scary if, if any students listening to this, to this or uh, any parents um, there's a lady with three degrees, can't find any work. It is. And, and so what happens between high school where you're told, and I taught for 28 years, not at the high school level, but you're told, get an education and you open the world. And, and, and obviously you would have been in a pretty advanced program because you're taking maths and sciences, mm -hmm. going into the medical field. Mm -hmm. So you were a good student. You couldn't have got 
before you well i mean it, 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 yeah it was it was challenging <laughs> you had to work hard yeah so you took your maths went toward medicine um must have been tough telling your parents i know i've got my two degrees i'm not sure what i want to do oh it's still i think it's still you know my dad's self-employed he's a barber um and he worked very hard for everything he had mm. Uh, he knows that working hard, it's kind of embedded in us that you have to work hard to get, you know, where you want to get. And, yeah, it was completely discouraging, especially, you know, he, he saw, I don't know how many clients a day. Yeah. He knows half the city, and yet still there was never an opportunity that was ever available. And that frustrated him probably even more, thinking, you know, the city's small, sometimes connections can help you get your foot in the door, and it really did absolutely nothing in it. It just kind of reiterated for me that it's an eye-opener yeah and that maybe you know I just had to keep telling myself there was a greater destiny for me that whatever I was seeking as hard as it was to not get a job that wasn't part of where I needed to go it's a part of the plan it was exactly and that was really the only thing that kept me sane although there were times of insanity but um, you know the hardest part was just not being able to provide for your family and you know wanting to be able to tell your children that that's right, I went to school, you need to go to school, and I did all this, and mm. there was nothing here, and here I'm getting these doors slammed to my face, and I can't provide, and I'm not the type of person to just <clears throat> become complacent or subdued to any of this. I really had a vision, and I, I was never going to stop until that vision actually came true, because I wanted the story to tell my children that despite the obstacles, despite anything, that you could still you know, create anything that you want to in this world. So, you know, with that, having my children as my motivation to, to move forward, um, I, I just, I kept going. I kept trying to make contacts. I mean, it's hard. I think that education is a key piece of growing up. Um, does it really contribute to you getting a good job? My experience is no. <laughs> but I think that, I mean, I will encourage my children to go to post-secondary because I think that the social aspect of it and really those are the best years of your life you can never you know get those years back um, also it teaches you other skills you know it teaches you how to be motivated it teaches you how to get things done it teaches you you know the tolerance it teaches you many things that you're not going to acquire if you don't go to post-secondary um, so I think it's really important to to get your post-secondary uh, education you know not necessarily for the academic aspect of it, although you do, I mean, there's, there's knowledge that I have that I can make sense of things that most people can't because of my science background, and I do appreciate that because there's great conversations I have with, you know, certain people about, you know, whatever it is from the universe to the smallest, you know, to gardening, I, I understand. And you could have got into medicine. I could have, um, you know, and, and in the end, could. in the end, I'm really happy I didn't because that's not where... I see myself, and that's not where my beliefs are. Um, How long did it take to find to, right through high, through university? You mm. were still were you searching, or did, did it just open up to you one day? That, what am I doing? Well, I, I, after university, I mean, you hit the real world, and you're trying to find a job. I was teaching part time, and you know, I, I just I thought to myself, well, I need to get more education because you know, if I have a master's degree, then well, then I can get any job I want, and maybe they'll hire me full-time here or there, you know. And it, it's such an unfortunate thing from my personal experience because I don't believe that this is in every area, every organization, every business. I think there's some exceptional places out there, and I, I hope to be one of those exceptional organizations that, that encourages creativity, innovation, and education. But you get to a point sometimes where it becomes a dog-eat-dog, -dog, and the more educated you are and the more creative you are, the more suppressed or the more, you know, it, it, it's not an encouraging environment sometimes, depending where you're working. And, and that's what's hard is that, you know, you have this vision that I'm going to, you know, do this. I have all the skill. I have all this talent. I know I can contribute so much to all these different places. And I know I can do this, you know, greater good out there. And then nobody is open to accepting that. And if anything, they just kind of stomp it down and try to suppress you into you know, being this complacent person, that's not going to move ahead. <laughs> it, uh, um, you're going to find out as you go through life. I've, I've 
been there. I've, I've gone through it. And, and I think one of the problems that you're identifying is that there are so many people who are disengaged in their work mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. they're, they're working, but they're just not engaged in it. And so when somebody comes in and, and somebody has a, uh, you know, the kind of enthusiasm and, and, and energy and passion that they can remember they might have had when they first got into the job, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it's hard to overcome that culture mm -hmm. within the organization. And, and I think that's probably, maybe that's something that you, you recognize, maybe you didn't even recognize it, but you felt it internally, that mm -hmm. the only place where you can truly be open and be yourself is if it's your own business. Completely. It's, it's like, then 100% mm -hmm. of the time, and you then you just decree. well yeah, and then you just have to get people to adopt that same yeah, <laughs> enthusiasm and vision. It, it's, it's a different ball game. Well, but. Yeah. The interesting thing though is what you're doing in, in terms of working on a short term basis with different businesses on a, on a contract basis, and I, I've noticed that too. Is that you can come in for a short time, do what they have, what, what they want you to do, and then they'll let you go. Mm -hmm. Like you can leave. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you're coming in and you're going to force everybody else to change. You're coming in to fill the That's need. That's right. And you know, that, that kind of segues nicely into this whole need for training and and develop staff development. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's probably where that's that's where your business is pretty much focusing, isn't it? It's it's on online education to to help develop staff, develop It is. I mean it, it's kind of broad in the sense that, you know, even from even before that, because I think that there's still a huge transition and many companies aren't ready to take that transition into online education and much of my work starts with simple strategic planning or what are they afraid of I, I, you know what I have no idea because I I, I think I, no that's not true I should say some people and, and it always comes down to the same thing people are afraid of losing their jobs for some odd reason you know whether it's when you come into an organization as an employee and you are you have that enthusiasm people are worried you're going to take their job and it, it's not all the time but I have experienced that and I'm, I'm kind of a little bit of a hippie where I just feel like can everyone just get along and be merry and we can just you know create this great place for everybody to be and, and thrive and it's not always like that um, and the reality is is with online education because you can offer so much more um, you know, simultaneously, you can have 10 courses running of the same subjects as opposed to one. So you actually create more opportunity and yeah, leverage same, people's same time. Instructor. Exactly. And it's consistent, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, and the thing is, we're in a rural community, and you can offer training to so many people. I mean, I still, I'm still baffled why, you know, grade 11, 12 is not offered online to, to rural communities who have to leave their communities to acquire education. You don't even have to look rural. I'm, I'm thinking in terms of um, where I'm located out in, in the valley, in, uh, in Admer. Uh, we've got students at Confed who would like to take a particular course in grade 12 to get into a, a university program, mm -hmm. but there's not enough students who want to take the course. So the course isn't offered. Mm -hmm. but all you really need to do is have one course being offered at one location. Mm -hmm. and which is online. <laughs> which is online. And, and it doesn't matter if you've got two or three or four students in that, mm -hmm. in that group at a school. You can be getting your credit. That's right. Just like you did with Athabasca. That's right. And, and that, I think that has to be where we're moving because there are schools that are operating like that, pilot schools, mm -hmm. where students basically come into a room and they may only be there for half the day, but they're... they're they're doing their own courses online, mm -hmm. and there's a facilitator in the room that is uh, That's right. just there to help when I mean, you run into a problem. And you can still have that hybrid approach where a lot of the theory is done online, and you do have some face-to-face -face component. Yep. So I mean, and the thing is with online education is that it, it teaches you something that face-to-face -face doesn't, and that is you have to create this your own enthusiasm, your own motivation. You have to drive yourself yep. to go on the computer and to do your work. Yep. And that's something that is a valuable skill because to be honest, acquiring that from doing my master's degree, I believe contributed to me continuing to move forward in my career. So um, it's good for time management. It's amazing for time management. It, it just gives you those, those essential skills that you, you really can't get in a classroom. Um, but I, I, you know, most of my clients, to be honest, very few of my clients um, I'm working with 
in terms of online education. Most of them it's still face to face or it's instructional through yeah. DVDs. It's not it's not online yet. Yeah. And you have to appreciate that too because it's baby steps. Yeah. They'll go to their um, 10 branch offices and send a person out to each branch office to give the same presentation. That's right. And, and the cost on travel, and I mean, we're also in a very, you know, environmentally sensitive era that people have to be more conscious of, of the travel, of the paper, and online education is a solution to that too. Bottom line, too. It's, it's so much more economical. It is. It and, is. and I mean, it depends how, how, you know, what your budget is at the end of the day. You can do some amazing things online, and, and sky's the limit, really. Or you can do some basic things, but either way, if they're structured with pedagogy, they're going to be just as effective. Yeah. I think there's this, um, it's a, I, I came across this term, confirmational bias, at one point. I don't know where I, re, I read about it, but it's like no matter how good something is, the, the online education process we're talking about, if somebody can find one thing <laughs> that somebody yeah. says was negative, totally. then they'll latch on to that and they say, will. That, that I get supports that often. my Yeah. I'll my get that discredit. often when I'm, you know, in the process of strategic planning or I'm consulting with clients. And, you know, what I say to them is, how did they do it? Did they do it right? Because yeah. you do get one shot. And if you don't do it right, it will yeah. falter. So you have to do it right. And it's just like anything, engaging people who are experts in certain fields. I'm, you know, a pedagogy expert. I'm a practitioner in online yeah. education you need to go that route. It's like you're not going to yeah. go to um, a heart surgeon if you need you know, brain surgery. There's people who specialize in certain fields and, and I think people have to start appreciating that and it is a culture shift and I've learned that in the five years that I've been in business. It's, it's you know, baby steps. It's uh, appreciating where people are at and trying to take them to that next level and doing that all in Northern Ontario. Um, you know, a lot of people have told me, why haven't you gone down south? You know, you'd be much more successful. And I mean, I'm sure I would be, but... My family's here. Yeah, my family's here. My heart is here. My passion is here. I see great opportunity. And there's in, a need here. And there's a huge need. There is a huge yeah. need and every... And the reason why I chose this field, I mean, education is so broad. Everywhere you go, there's an education piece, and there should be. Whether you're small or you're big or you're, you're students or you're adult, it doesn't matter. There's always a need for education yeah. um, and so I, I thought this you know of course when I first started I thought this is a genius idea yeah. everyone's gonna need this sounds good every business my business proposal was sound yeah. I had all these businesses yeah. that I was gonna approach and Maybe hiring a dozen people in the year. yeah you know it was it was the, and, and you know the dream is still there and it's getting to that point but you know I have to be patient with the progress because it people other people aren't there yet and and you know it's but but it is, unfortunately, and I, I don't think that you're the only young person who is running into this kind of barrier because so many students will, will graduate and, and have to do what you're doing. They, they have to take part-time jobs here and there, and, and so they're if basically they becoming, <laughs> if they get them, they're, and, and they're becoming self-employed. They, they may not think of it that way, but that's what mm -hmm. they're doing. They're contracting out their skills. The problem is, is it is so discouraging when you, um, as my son says, he's a he's a mortgage broker, but as he says every morning when he gets up, he's unemployed. It's true, you are. Yeah, yeah. So it's like every day you've got to go out and, and you do. find work. It's um, it's 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 a whole different world. It's not for everybody. When they say five percent of people succeed in, in having their own business, I, I completely can understand. Mm -hmm. um, because you do have to wake up and you know that if you don't get out there, work your butt off, and that doesn't guarantee that you're gonna be able to provide. It just means that maybe you'll you'll open a door just a crack that at some point you'll be able to just run through that door and never turn yeah. back. Yeah. And it's it's I, I couldn't imagine a different life because now that I you know so involved in what I do, um, I love what I do. I love the freedom of being, and when I say freedom, it's not that you get to really do what you want because you almost you do have to work harder. You don't come home from your job and. It's and not a forty-hour week. No, it's it's. I don't even know. I, it's like. Well, you're not. You're, <clears throat> I, I always tell people when you're self-employed, you're never not working. You're not. You're always thinking of that next thing you can do, and and I have to say, 
as a mother, that was a challenge, was that, you know, every moment of every day, I was trying to think of how can I grow my business? What can I do? Who can I approach? You know, what's the next innovative thing I can bring to a client? You know, and always thinking of how can I make this work while, you know, being a mother with small children. And I had to learn to put that aside, to turn my brain off when I was with my children because it was so consuming that it just took away from from my role as a mother. So I had to first accept that I chose to be a mother and I had to, you know, focus on, on raising my children who are still small, but I've learned to put that aside. And I've learned to be patient with the outcome and know that success will happen. I just have to be patient with it. You're, you're going to experience all those wonders that you missed when you were a grandparent, so you'll come back. Yeah, I know, I know. My parents time. tell me that all the time, that yeah. being a grandparent is completely different. But, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, I think the struggle in, in your worst enemy is yourself because you're, you're, I'm so hard on myself. And I think that, you know, that sometimes translates with people where I think, you know, I always <clears throat> hear from people who are self-employed that, you know, it's hard to find good workers. And I never really understood that because I thought, well, there's lots of good workers. I'm a good worker, I, and you know. But when you have worked so hard and you never gave up and you've, you've gone through, you know, the challenges and you've made it through and you just keep going and you encounter people who... They 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 want to help out. They want to they want to they, they want to work, but they don't have that same drive as you. You have to learn to be so tolerant. And it's not to say that they're not good workers or anything like that, but it's really hard to find people who have that same drive. Um, and it I gets, and I now it get gets that. beaten out of you. In, in oh, it does. Even in, well. I can say this because I worked in the public sector, but in the public sector, it, it's difficult to have all that creativity and, and enthusiasm and passion because you're part of a system that takes so long to change. I know. And, and it's, you almost have to go through your steps. Oh, you do. And I mean, it's, it's so easy to lose that motivation. And there have been times where you question everything. You question everything. What am I doing? You know, what am I doing? And then somehow, it comes together and those are the moments that just you know make it all worth it, it it's mm -hmm. kind of like going through pregnancy where you're thinking why did I do this yeah. and then you have this beautiful baby and, I, and I can't stop it yeah I know <laughs> and then and then you know you get you know the the rightness of the fruit like it just all comes together and it's it's that perfect moment where it just everything makes sense yeah. so I mean that's what being self-employed is like if I could compare it to anything <laughs> and, and the even people who are uh, are working uh, for a company. Um, your husband probably works for Valet. Yeah. So, so whether you're working for Valet Extrata, whether you're working for any of the construction companies, you're employed, but to a certain extent, you're self-employed because you're marketing your your skills and abilities and your own personality. So, oh, totally. So I mean, and and uh, it, there's no guarantee that you're going to stay there if you no. I if think you that's, fall off the yeah. rail. I think that's in any job, and I think complacency is, is, is a huge factor, and I think that that goes back to, you know, you talked about employee training, and I think you have to constantly encourage people to be creative, but when you're working in an environment that doesn't allow you to be creative and suppresses that because everyone's scared of losing their job if the next person is more creative than the other, I mean, you get into this volatile situation, and, and you see it often, um, and I think it's important, you're right, as, as an individual, regardless of that to constantly move ahead in your word whatever you're doing because knowledge is power and and it really is and and people can't suppress that so i think that you always have to take that extra step to move ahead whether it's in your job or if you're self-employed acquire education on the side whatever you need to do be open to learning i think that that is a critical component in anything i mean and it's really something that has to get across to employers and managers because uh in many cases, I think there's a lot of companies where they're, especially in the, uh, possibly in the trades, I'm not sure, but where once you learn how to do a particular job, you can pretty much rely on your, your past experience. And yet there's so much professional and personal development that if you're not training and helping your own employees improve somehow, mm -hmm. even if it's, a, if, if it's getting them to be more fit, giving them a, a, okay. an, hour, an hour a week of time I mean, off to go to a gym or something. No, and you know what, some, some companies, even in the trades that I've encountered, they do have great programs that encourage that. 
Other companies don't. I mean, and you see the difference. You see the difference when companies value their people. Um, you see the difference when they, they value, you know, them moving ahead. They value everything about them. You see the difference. And I've, I've seen that being, you know, being an outsider coming into companies, you, you see things differently than people who are obviously inside the company. And yeah, I mean, I've been, to stay quiet sometimes. yeah, I know it's true. Uh, but I mean, I've, I've encountered companies, you know, organizations that, that do value their people and they do have those programs. And I think that's amazing, but there's always programs that don't. Yeah. It's part of leadership too. Oh, totally. And I think that every company should aim to encourage their people to, to move ahead. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that's good. We're going to take a, a, a real short break and then we're going to come back. Uh, we're talking to Miranda Rocca Tricelli at uh, CKLEM 96.7 FM. The show is Learning Clinic. I'm your host, Bob Kerwin. We're going to take about a two minute break and then we're going to continue with the show. <laughs> 